All right. The 2022 season was pretty decent. Loads of great skating went down. There was plenty of top rate edits. Some pro skates were dished out. We've had a couple of collabs. There was a little bit of drama. I'm gonna ruin your career and I'm gonna break your legs. But overall, it was a, a net positive. Now it's only right that we recognize those who've done a really, really good job risen to the top of their chosen field, giving them like a little pat on the back and stuff like that. I let my Instagram and YouTube followers suggest some nominations so you can't like just throw a wobbler at me and be like, oh, you didn't be this person, you didn't be that person. Nah, man, that was on you. I've done like a little bit of quality control to make sure it wasn't complete chaos. I added a few other bits in there and then let you vote. There's also gonna be some awards that like I've just chosen myself. Let's kick the thing off with Female Skater of the Year. I'd say it's been a fairly competitive year for uh, females. There's uh, a fair few like young girls coming up through the ranks, making an impression. But uh, taking third is uh, Mary. She had a top year pro skate USD tour. Second, Nicole recently announced on the USD team. Great representative for rollerblading. And the winner, who actually won Lady of the Year on the One magazine last year, is uh, China Wirestall. Her trick vocabulary and style is absolutely unreal. China would have got my vote as well. I think she's just like that little bit more above. There's something about what she's doing. It's just like a few levels above, but like really cool to see uh, Sioa and Bioli making an impact they're gonna become like more and more competitive like as it goes on. Best Billy Elliot impression and also actually uh, best takedown goes to David Sizemore. <laughs> the Ron Seal quick drying wood stain for those who have looked after themselves, protected themselves a little bit and have still got it award. In third place, Julio, yeah. Julio's really still active, isn't he? Still gets out there, like he's always getting himself on the tours. Don't know how he gets allowed to like the time off. Like he's got some, uh, he's got a pretty good deal going with his uh, wife and kids. Like, yeah, I'm uh, just going on another tour, seeing a bit, always skating, always in the edits, and always like I'm still like impressed by what he's doing, and I'm always still looking out for it. So yeah, nice one to him to take in third, uh, second, Randy Schweizer, who absolutely kicked off on the Blading Cup, Rock. <laughs> he was mega keen. And he's had the wheels, hasn't he, this year? He's done the edit for that. Was that this year? Yeah, I think it was. He just seems motivated, man. So yeah, fair play to him, but pipping him to the post and only just Sven. Sven, 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 Goran Eriksson. Mate, that uh, 1441, really well presented, like really good skating, unbelievable all, all round the like. An edit that, you know, should be considered as part of one of the edits of the year. Holding his own, just doesn't, doesn't look like he's slowing down at all. Full of beans and a big inspiration. Maybe I should have also included Walt Austin in there as well, because man, that section he released, that 41, oof. So the Sunday Roast Stunner Award for Best Looking Skate. So a lot of the options that were suggested were them skates. They made up for what, like 50% of the options here. So cumulatively, they win. But let's actually break it down individually. Let's do top three. Third was the Roasties, Plastic Pushers, Collab Skate. Clean, simple, old school logo. The all black is their most like, popular skate. So this makes total sense. Second, any them 999. I mean, there's a lot to choose from, so no surprise at that. Like, you've got a fair few votes, and like, it's just different colorways, isn't it? Like, maybe small differences. I think there's small, like, uh, differences in the uh, flexiness of the uh, plastic sometimes as well, depending on uh, which color you go for. But pretty much the same, say, clean, minimal design, reflective of like what is in trend, like, outside of uh, rollerblading as well. So, yeah, no, again, no surprise really. And the winner taking home a tube of a uh, Bisto gravy granules. Don Bruce's Mesma. I like that skate, so I'm pretty pleased that that's one. I am a little bit surprised though, because it's like, well, it's green. And I, I imagine that's a pretty hard color to convince people to like, you know? It's Pollington pea green. It's fresh garden pea green. And in the past, you know, when rollerblades had green skates, they've looked like, Awesome. They've looked like bong water. So I'm glad this is one. I think he deserves it. I really like what Dennis has done with his setup as well. At the opposite end of the spectrum, the ET and the microwave looking award for ugliest skate. ET phone. Oh. The most humming skate available in 
2022 and a few of the nominations were actually in the best looking skate as well so that just goes to show you like no matter how good looking you think something is like somebody's always gonna also find it ugly like that's that rubbish that you might have like a fresh skin fade you're thinking yeah I'm, um, I'm like an eight at the moment i'm looking pretty good go around the corner something goes what are you meant to be mate an ewok like People have opinions about these things and sometimes the most beautiful is also the most ugly. Right, let's dip into this. So third is Trigger and I had actually forgotten this skate had even existed. Kind of looks like a gym bro carbon, doesn't it? Like with bad dress sense. So yeah, that was third. Second and only just beating Trigger by 0.1 of a percent is the uh, Eugen and in shadow, you know, the other colour. So not the one that's black basically, the one that's like grey, orange and white I think it was. The thing looks like it was inspired by rhinoplasty, you know when you've got that thing over your snoz line? It looks like the kind of boot they would give you in hospital if you'd broken every single bone in your foot. And the winner by a length, as voted for by you, the uh, great rollerblading public of 2022. The skate that most closely resembles a rugby team shower plug after it's been set on fire. Bobby Spazoff, Dogma Domestic Punk. I mean, that name alone cries angsty GCSE art project. Why is it so long? It does actually look like one of those granny shopping trolley things. Yeah, a bit of a tough decision between uh, Bobby and the Eugen, but yeah, I would launch the Bobbies. The Accrington and Stanley Air Miles Award, AKA Where in the World is Carmen San Diego Award for most traveling done in pursuit of rollerblading goes to Joe Atkinson. I feel like he was just like all over the place, man. Every time he'd post a new story, he'd be like in a different country. So fair play to him. I mean, I think the least Solomon could do was like give him a Z bed. Imagine Solomon technology, Z bed, oh mate. Most positive influence award goes to the roller skate twins. They are absolutely incredible. A complete credit to rollerblading. And I can't wait to see what they do in the future. Best fit. It was some really strong competition for it. I think this was probably one of the most competitive uh, of the categories. I mean, you've got Robbie Pitts in there. Mate, he looks like a Tina Turner stylist for the Thunderdome, Mad Max. Bust a deal, face the wheel. Bust a deal and face the wheel. Unbelievable outfits, mate. Colin Kelso, Sean Kelso, kind of like, I guess they kind of counterbalance each other out. Colin's kind of like quite work wary, quite sensible, practical looking. Sean Kelso, a man not afraid to clash colours and patterns. Marius, Dom, Sean Darce, like sensible, quite uh, like a 50s uh, inspired. Ben Weiss, big special shout out to Ben Weiss. But that, was it like a custom Gucci fit that he had on the blading cup, mate? Spectacular. Third, we've got Alex Brosco. I'm a little bit surprised that like a uh, He's in the top three. Nice outfit, so. Second place, we have Sean Kelso. Nice one, Sean. Always an exciting fit, bright, colorful. And the winner is Robbie Pitts, deservedly so. Robbie Pitts has always had the best fits. Oh, that rhymes. He's undefinable, he's fashion forward. You can't pigeonhole Robbie. He is the pigeon king. You know that thing, don't put baby in the corner. Nobody puts baby in the corner. Don't put Robbie in the corner. Shout out to Robbie, who also is uh, the winner of uh, most belts worn while out skating, which is free. Trick of the year. Let's go through them all, actually. John Bellino, pole jam to chain. Super risky. Don't know how he even did that. Whee! I'm so good. Like, combining, like, really modern styles of skating, loads of skill. Definitely a bit of risk involved in that one as well. Sam Levington, that turbo soul drifting. Just a beautiful, beautiful movement. He's done it! Sean Keane, double tap wall ride. Out of this world kind of skill. I spent $20,000 with my partners in behind. Colin Martin, illusion Mizu drift. As soon as I seen that, I was like, I got to try that. And it was actually a little bit more tricky than I thought it was going to be. Junkie Park, the 180 soul drift to soul. A lot of drifting going on. This is like. Like the next level up of set slide, isn't it? A drift. Scott Blackmore, pud slide, heel slide, wheel slide. Mate, Scott is a dark horse, mate. He's an enigma. I feel like he's probably skater most likely to get a trick out of absolutely nothing. Like barren land. You could do one of those bare grill things. You could drop him anywhere in the world. 
and Scott will make an edit out of his location. Mate, oh, if we had the budget, we could do some great things in rollerblading. Anyway, uh, Danny Malm, that backside fish, then switch backside fish, so good. And then Sean Dash dropping soul on that rail, mate. That was a corker. Taking third was Junkie Park with the uh, 180 soul drift to soul. Just unbelievably stylish, really controlled. Just looks cool. That's what it's all about, isn't it? Roll veins, just making things look cool. Second was Sean Dash with that drop in soul. Just him like teetering on that ledge, like full commit, like just fully dropping in, but not into a ramp, onto a rail outside somebody's house. <laughs> Oh my goodness, pressure's on. Amazing technique to come away with that one. And the winner was John Bellino, pole jam to chain grind. Really exciting, very new, very cool. Definitely well harder than it looks. Yeah, shout out to John for that one. Unbelievable, man. The WWF most likely to win a Royal Rumble award. There's some dangerous looking uh, <laughs> rollerbladers out there. There's some that actually look like they could uh, fit in pretty well in the WWF. Third was uh, Carlos. Hardcore Brazil Pianowski, a uh, very, very obvious choice. He kind of looks like a wrestler, or he could be a hype man. He definitely looks like he's into wrestling. Some of his game was pretty similar to wrestling, actually, the way he threw himself downstairs and that. Second place was John John Bellino. There's just something about him, innit? It's just something about him. He looks like he'd be good, like good at getting people into a figure four leg lock, or he looks like somebody who's put a few Boston crabs on people in his time, like when he's been at a bar mid gig, like somebody said something about the band, oh, you're band of rubbish. He's jumped off the stage of Boston, grabbed them, like took all their money, took all their lunch money and stuff like that. That's what Bellino looks like. And then the obvious winner, Derek Henderson, just built. He's just absolutely built for it, isn't he? I reckon he'd be really good at that. I don't mean, I don't know if he's into it. Don't want to make uh, cast aspersions and judgments and stuff like that. But I think he would suit it. He'd be a good character, man. He's tall. He's massive. He's got that like a Viking S looking beard. Imagine them three together, mate. The Legion of Doom. Them, them three. That is scary. Malatino Heat Award, aka Trailer Park Genius Award. Mullet of the Year. Some pretty, uh, pretty good nominations in here as well. Let's start with Marius Gal went for the, the curtain mullet. Woof, that is that is rare, mate. That's the rarest Pokemon you can ever get. Imagine haircut cards for skaters. USD have got those cards with all the skaters. Yeah, rubbish. Get haircuts. George Wilson, very nice curly mullet. Gabe Talamentes, really strong. Full, very full mullet. Robbie Pitts, another thick and full ginger mullet. Bonus points for being ginger. Oh, that reminds me actually. It's made me a bit sad about losing my mullet. Billy O'Neill, get, oh, I think he's done that to get in with the team, hasn't he? The team are like, get a mullet, Billy, man. Come on, get down with us like. And then uh, one of his team members actually, Don Bruce. Really strong mullet. Third was Robbie Pitts. Beautiful mane of hair. A lion's mane. It's the golden lion's hammering of rollerblading is Robbie. Rare. Protect him at all costs. Coming in second was Billy O'Neill. Nice one. It's a, quite a sensible mullet, actually. It's kind of mullet you could, I feel like you could get away with at a family event or like maybe even a business meeting. But the landslide, absolutely mullet slide winner. <laughs> Winning by the length at the back is uh, Don Bruce. Oh, mate, that is spectacular. Midland mums from the 80s swooning over that haircut like, look at this stunner. Villain of the year. <laughs> There's been a couple of villains this year, actually, hasn't there? There's been some stiff competition for this one, right? First of all, Martina from Rosie's calling people clowns, calling potential customers clowns in the comments section. You can't be doing that, like, the brand can't be seen to be calling people clowns, like, I don't know, you're not that edgy. That's not, like, what Rosie's is about, I don't reckon. And then also the whole censorship thing, totally in contradiction to the, the skate that we're pushing at the time, which was uh, the domestic punk thing. Bobby, and I think Bobby actually would want this award. That's what it is. His whole personality is based on him thinking he is like the most hated rollerblader ever. Like he thinks he is the villain of the year. So I reckon he'd be quite up for this, but he's up there because he tried to falsely claim the council estate classic as his own. That's for the council estates. That's for the kids. Can't be claiming it as your own, especially if you can't land it. Can't be touched, can't be uh, Peter from Adapt, the whole levy situation, like threatening to break uh, a young kid's legs. Then his reply, I'd do it again. What do you mean by that? Andy from Razors, the incentive pyramid scheme, that Ponzi scheme he was running, duping people. 
yeah, yeah, if you do this for me, I'll pay you this much money. Nah, I changed our mind. Uh, me, Air Manatee. Don't know why he was, I guess, like, for the whole horn gacker lie thing, but that comes up in a different thing. David McNamara. One of his jokes was about somebody pooing themselves. When this negative acid didn't go exactly to plan, a little bit of poo fell out. Come on, Dave, step it up a little bit. Solomon for just, like, breaking everybody's hearts all the time and, you know, kind of teasing. Just tea actually poking, going, ah, oh, yeah, like, thanks for wearing the skates. I'm not going to do anything, though. Third is Martina calling people clowns. <laughs> I still find that really funny. Andy from Razors, and the winner, by a fair bit of a margin, is Peter from Adapt. His reply was just like, it just made it way worse. He should have probably done like, followed Andy, and just been like, I don't know, said nothing. Best timeshare award goes to Andy for his properties in Tenerife. The Lies Lies from Seagull Eyes Award. So the nominations, a few clips from a chill sesh. It's never a chill sesh, never ever. People have been trying to spin this lie. The yonks, and it's so obvious, like sweating, like all battled up and bruised. Oh, just a few clips. That's you skating your absolute best. It's such a lie, like. I hope people like stop doing that this year. Like, Rosie's not being for sale. The other one, yeah. They had like an official hearing for the for the sale to make up for like for investment for their debt. Like an equity investor, private equity investor, obviously came in and saved them, like. Why, why lie? Like, the official listing was there. That seemed like a really funny one to me. Nobody wants to lose a brand, do they? So, like, if you're just honest, being like, like, we're struggling here, like, we really want to continue doing it. That would have been so much better. Whatever, your choice. Anyway, raises incentive pay is another nomination, yeah. And then Manatee doing the horn trick. Yeah, mate. Still not happen, does it? Hmm, right. Fourth, Roses not being for sale. Third, a few chill clips from a chill session. Second is Air Manatee uh, not doing the horn trick. Still time, mate. Like, people people want to see it. Like, And then the winners, Razor Incentive Play. Andy, mate, you massive liar. Why are you always lying? To be fair, he did cough up in the end, though, didn't he? Most improved acting award goes to John Julio. <laughs> started off a little bit ropey in the Clarks ad. Damn, I wish I had them. But in the recent Them Intuition one, he's like, he's really picked things up. It's going in a good direction. Hmm. Um, what about this? Is this a hiking boot? And I look forward to seeing more of his acting in uh, 2023. Amateur skater of the year, rookie of the year, whatever you want to call it. Michael Vitserman, strong candidate. Blade Cup winner. Junkie Park, absolute style master. Yandriel, just like going from strength to strength. 50-50 pro frame, he's got the wheels. He's a motivated man. Danny Malm, strong. I think he had a banger last year as well. Like some really good eddies. He just kind of they come out as a bit of a surprise as well. Martin Danning winning AM at Blade Cup. Also the mini ramp he won at Blade Cup. He's got good competition in pedigree. I think he's underrated. Great bits in Mesmer and like his own individual edit, Jay Yoon, who I reckon will soon just be like smashing the feasers, like just winning loads of them. He's unbelievable. Jay Yoon came in third with 16% of the votes. Yandriel came second, 19% of the votes. Good on him, man. I think I feel like that's like well deserved. Definitely a hard worker for it. And Michael Vitzman, not really surprised with this one, and this is the person I would go for. Won the thing with 34% of the votes. Like, if USD can find the space in there, like pretty busy pro team, I reckon he'll be like, he'll be moving up fairly soon, won't he? The Total Recall Best Skate Face Awards. You know, sometimes when you're skating, your face just does some bizarre things. It just goes off on its own little adventure, like it's going through a time warp, man, like all mangled up. Like, there's some uh, good nominations in here, and I had nothing to do with this. I'm like, removing any kind of association with this one this is always used lots of uh, nominations recommendations right so in third we have mary in second place and this is a bit of a confusing one for me frankie morales like what i didn't i don't know that he particularly pulls faces like i know he's not a fan of like smiling when you don't when you do in tricks but i don't ever i don't i can't find any footage of him pulling a particularly like bizarre face or anything. And then the out and out clear winner, Yangel Severio. There is, there is an intense look in this man's eyes when he skates. He is, he is solely thinking about the job at hand. The stained Tupperware award for skater most likely to bring a packed lunch goes to Danny Beer. 
Congratulations, Danny. Best wizard, best wizard skater. The influence of wizard skating has definitely been dripping down into aggressive skating, and it's really cool to see it as well. Third, the man who started the whole thing, Leon Bassin, like, would have been a bit of a shame if he wasn't in the top three. That would have been slightly embarrassing, but glad to see he's in the top three. Second, Mike Therese, mate. Absolutely crucial. I think he's been uh, a real, like, a uh, pillar in the uh, wizard community and, like, really good for like pushing it forward and like just showing what's possible. And I think it makes his like actually aggressive skate really good. Like one of my favorite skaters to watch because of that wizard influence. And then the outright winner by a long shot, by a country mile, Junkie Park with 43.8% of the votes. Man, outstanding man. He just makes it look really, really cool. It feels like he's bending the rules of physics. It's captivating. And another person, you know, I feel like it's really like heightened his aggressive skating as well. Shout out to him. The St. John's Ambulance Award for best treatment for an injury. I actually thought like halftime oranges was going to do way better, but I suspect that's because a lot of people don't even know what halftime oranges are. What are you talking about? I suspect it's actually just a very British thing. So like when I was a kid playing football, like at half time, you would get given a uh, orange segments basically to uh, keep the energy levels up, give you that little bit of boost. Like there was no LucasAid. Now nah, you'd sack that off, go straight to the source, the natural LucasAid. Get that down your life. Full of energy, a little bit of pulp in your teeth to uh, scare the opposition in the second half. Whole games have been turned on their head due to the potency of the halftime oranges. You get a good batch of oranges, mate. You're, you're three nil down at half time, mate. Seven three win. All headers, mate. All headers. Either way, it got fourth. The sponge was like a similar thing as well. I don't know if people knew what I was going on about with that either. The magic sponge, like again, with like youth sport. If you got injured, the magic sponge came out. Like that would fix any injury. You just take a regular sponge, water becomes a magic sponge. It's like the thing was blessed by Jesus or something. Right? It's better actually. Yeah? Yeah. Anyway, top three, rice. Rest, ice, compress, elevate. Second, a little bit of a boring one and also expensive if you're living in America, professional medical attention. And coming in first, basically the adult version of the magic sponge, the most dad advice you can ever get if you do like hurt yourself. Walk it off, mate. No matter what, even if you've just fallen off a roof, nah, mate. Walk that off, it'll be fine. The bones will just put themselves back together. Biggest violation of 2022. What do you think is like unforgivable? What should we not be seeing anymore? Like a, a, like a, a pro level. If uh, people are learning, yeah, fair enough. Taking the bronze medal is mistrials, not together. Come on, man. Always better together. Like uh, Brandy and Monica, mate. The boy is mine. Better together. It's like... Kill the world better place for you and for me and the entire human race. You ever seen a yin yang that's not together? No. It's like cosmology, man. It's uh, spiritual. It's better together. Just think about that when you're doing your mistrials. Yin and yang together, mate. Silver medal goes to stepping into grinds. It just looks revolting. That's the crack, isn't it? It's like, you know when you're a kid and you take like each step two feet, like boom, boom, because you're a baby and you're just learning and then you grow out of that. It's the same thing here. You've got to grow out of it. You've got to take off those stabilizers and just jump. Jumping's fun. Stepping, you know, in step aerobics or anything. Pull up your socks and jump. Mummy wow, I'm a big kid now. And the gold medal winning biggest violation of 2022 is rolling top sides. That one there was a violation. Personally, I wouldn't have it. Two decades in the gun shank. If you do it, just don't post it. Or try your hardest to blag that it's a completely different trick, which is totally viable. Section of the year. There's been some phenomenal skating this year, some really, really good sections. And because it's over a year, people always forget some as well. And I've tried my best to add in a few more that people hadn't mentioned. Like Jeremy Spiring, Crazy Pills, Josiah Blee, Alex Sam, stuff like that. I think there's the more obvious ones, the more recent ones in there, like Spaceman, obviously Colin, Sean, separate parts. Quinny Seasons, Austin by the Slice. I actually think there should be an official list of sections for the year. For 2023, we'll have some sort of form that people have to fill out. Like, and there's certain like requirements, like it has to be over three minutes. 
it can only be street because you maybe you'd have a park on separate or something like that there has to be like i don't know a certain amount of trips at least you have just that big list that people can look to and we like won't forget what happened this one was really close third is a uh, Colin Kelso spaceman unbelievable skating very progressive really really fun skating as well second is Don Bruce pro model edit forward thinking skating very like kind of free skating as well opening up like not only what can be skated but like also what can be done on them and the winner for section of the year is uh sean Kelso spaceman 2 again like just kind of what i was saying for colin really like incredible skating really excited it's amazing how sean and his brother colin like keep reinventing the way they're skating pushing themselves like keeping themselves relevant and like setting and leading trends in terms of skating what's like i feel like he also incorporates more simple moves and just does them really well like opens the section up with a front torque down a kink rail absolutely wild man to be skating this long and still have people like frothing at the mouth to see what you come out with next is a testament to their skill and ability and like a well-deserving winner the tricks per minute award also goes to the Kelso brothers for spacement too the number of tricks in that edit is phenomenal man you are getting your money's worth best snack out skating i'm a bit disappointed that port scratchings wasn't higher up in the list or raw onion i actually seen somebody eat a whole raw onion once for uh, it was in a club it was competition i mean why this club was doing this but anyway they were like if you eat this raw onion whole you get like free drinks for the rest of the night and my mate did it but then he was sick everywhere obviously <coughs> and it stank liquor battery which actually did well and it came third so shout out to the people who licked batteries when they were a kid they know they know what the score is i once did it with an aux cable out of a video camera trying to plug it into my video vcr Everyone's hell of a buzz second was protein bar i'm built different sensible sensible choice and then the winner was fruit again sensible choice i'm annoyed that chris didn't do better as well actually i think chris came in fourth actually people voted for crisps over boiled eggs <laughs> The Wonga Award for skater most likely to borrow money off you and not pay it back. Now I had nothing to do with the nominations, this is all you lot and this all feels like it's very personal, either digs or little jokes at people so this could be a, this could be a dangerous one right so coming in third is uh, Chris Edwards. I know who he owes money to, but uh, there's a few people voting for him. So uh, maybe Chris might be might be the year to settle up your debts, mate. <laughs> In second place, we've got Joe Atkinson. <laughs> I can imagine that. Uh, him like darting all around the world, you know, staying on people's sofas and that. Maybe he just can't pay him back because he doesn't have the right currency on him. That'd be a good excuse for him. But, oh, I've actually just changed all my money to this, so I don't really have anything. And the winner, by not much is uh, Josh Petty. Is Josh Petty the kind of person that you lend money to and then he would flat out deny that he borrowed anything off you at all? Not only is he not gonna pay you back, but he's not gonna even acknowledge the fact that he get, you uh, gave him money in the first place. I don't know, that's not me making that judgment. That's just like throwing uh, speculation into the air, but yeah. Josh Petty, mate. Collabs, been a big year for collabs. I think the driving force behind that has been mostly one brand, them skates. So they've had collabs with Brain Dead, Clarks, a really big one for the culture with Weekend. But there have been a few other ones as well. It's really good to see the collabs. I think, like, you know, crossing over a couple of audiences, crossing streams, so to speak. Third was Razors and Bladies. Second was Muzzle Spotted Dog. Thanks to everybody who voted for that one. Really appreciate that. Warms my heart. That is, like, the best thing that's come out of last year for me in terms of all this like rollerblading stuff and uh like don't want to get too sentimental some of the funniest conversations i've had in my life like trying to get that together and working on other things which maybe you'll see soon and then the outright winner is them and weekend like yep yeah, biggest one for the culture a bright orange skate which i really really like a few people don't proper radioactive looking thing two really cool videos come out of that one one of them with like a plethora of uh skateboarding talent from various different brands like feels like a little bit of a step forward i know there's naysayers like, oh it's not gonna make any difference but you know 
It's not gonna change the world, but it is a step in the right direction. The actual collab skate video is really good as well, really exciting stuff. It's just interesting, different, a creative endeavor, and we've got loads of like content to enjoy from it. Whiskers Copycat Award. There was a few I was expecting to come up, and then there was a load that you nominated there. <laughs> I wasn't expecting at all. So third is Frankie Morales, which surprised me. And at first I was like, what? What is this all about? But I guess like they're saying that uh, the skates copy Jordan's or like he's copying his old skates. Maybe that's what the crack is with that one. Uh, second was Broscow in Moopy shorts, <laughs> which made me laugh. That was a, a viewer nomination. <laughs> Did Moopy start wearing the jorts first? That's a strong look, actually. That's a strong look for 2023, is jorts. And then the uh, biggest copycat of all, and the one I thought was gonna be mentioned, and has won the thing, Roses. And, you know, people are just suggesting that they're, you know, kind of a little bit copying them skates. Fakest Steez, who's the biggest fraud? Who is unauthentic? I didn't really know what to expect with this one. <laughs> Roman Abrat, don't really know why he's in there, but yeah, you've gone for it and a few people have voted for it as well. Third is Bobby with his um, <laughs> Pingu Steez. Nobody naturally skates like that, he's absolute fraudster. I mean, claiming 720s when it's definitely not a 720. I love to count, I love to count. Air Manatee, um, what's he fake about? Look, he can only do backflips or something like that, so that's the fake steez. Or actually, all, all those like flame shirts and Jinko jeans that he like, all of a sudden wears since he got a bit of uh, notoriety to get more views. Meh, whatever. And then Air Dolphin, I'm a little bit surprised by that because like, Air Dolphin, like, I don't think the way he skates is fake at all. He's all, he's skated like that for years. He's like a decent skater as well. Maybe like all the Jinko and like, again, the flame shirts and stuff like that. But yeah, he's won it, mate, unfortunately. Air Dolphin, fake as steez. The panel of judges that are voting on this one are me and introducing sweaty sock Dave McNair, mate. What's your, <laughs> what's your opinion on the uh, fake as Steve, Dave? Oh yeah, well, that's pretty interesting. Oh, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if I can say that, mate. That's not a very nice thing to say. But yeah, we are in agreement. Yeah, he's a proper fake. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I heard about that as well. But we can't mention that either. So me and uh, D Dave McNair, mate, have decided that Fake Steez is going to Bobby Spazov. Congratulations, Bobby. This is the big one, Skater of the Year. 13 nominations I put up there for you. Didn't want to do just three, that seems unfair. Let's have 13 in there. I think it would have been fair if any of the top three won this. Oh, you agree, do you, mate? Um, so third is Sean Kelso. Incredible output this year with Basement. Amazing skating, like I said before, just like progressive, progressive for himself, like constantly evolving, always exciting to watch trying new things, trying to like push skating in different directions. Really exciting stuff. I think he's done well, man. He deserves a, deserves a first, deserves second or third, and he's got third. Actually taking second though is Nils Janssen. A really good, uh, like a good kind of, you know, quite clean cut representative for rollerblading. There's no dramas with him or anything like that. He's got his own things going on. He's motivated on his YouTube really health conscious as well, like somebody that like you could easily see an outside sponsor getting behind because of his like clean cut image. But on top of that though, he is actually a good skater. It's definitely changed over the years. I think he's really refined now. Everything he does is clean. He's still got some big hammers in there, some tech stuff as well. Deserving again on first, second or third, and he's got uh, second. Taking the top spot, skater of the year 2022, Dom Bruce. Oh, that's, that's who you would have gone for as well, is it, mate? Yeah, me too. I am 16.7% uh, of the votes. Incredible skater, skates with this freedom, skates with energy, skates with like a jazz, as he refers to it. You don't know what's gonna happen, but he's got such a, a great skill set that he can carry that through. He opens up the possibilities of what is skatable, what constitutes like a trick. And I think people would be inspired to get into rollerblading, seeing Dom skating, just like seeing how much fun he's having and how much passion he puts into it. So yeah, a deserving winner. I actually reckon he could have probably won last year as well. That's it, it's all wrapped up. Really excited to see what happens this year. Thank you to all my patrons. I couldn't possibly do this without your support. If you want to join them, 
get access to the exclusive content, all that kind of stuff. It starts from three quid. Here's a few more videos you can watch. Uh, I'll see you again soon. Spotty dog. <laughs>